Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. In this video, I'm going to take a look at a game between Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura played in the sixth round of the Sinkefield Cup, the strongest tournament of the year going on in St. Louis. Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura are compatriots, both representing the United States of America, both also world-class players, of course. Wesley So, we see him here on the left side, has not had a great tournament. He was on the receiving end of two masterpieces in rounds 4 and 5, where he lost to Levan Aronian and world champion Magnus Carlsen. So he can't be too thrilled about the result, while Hikaru Nakamura had a quiet tournament up till here, 2.5 out of 5, and will certainly be looking to improve his result by moving up the ranks a little bit. Let's jump into the game and see what happened. Wesley So with the white pieces went for d4. Nakamura played knight to f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop to g7. The infamous King's Indian defense, one of Nakamura's favorites. He's employed it regularly against many of the world's best players. He had many battles here and certainly knows what he's doing. In general, Hikaru Nakamura nowadays a very, very well prepared player in the opening. Wesley So looking for a fight after two defeats many players would have or could have chosen a more quiet line to play with white but Wesley So goes right down the main line of the King's Indian here plays the move Bishop e2 not the only move anymore nowadays h3 e5 d5 has become quite popular championed among other by the Russian champion Yevgeny Tomashevsky so this is a fashionable line but bishop e2 is and will, I believe, remain the main line in this position. e5, the typical King's Indian move. Once again, white has a choice. Bishop e3 is a move here. d5 is a move. Even d5 is a move, even though it's not seen very regularly on top level. But the main line is also the most natural move. Short castles. Nakamura plays knight to c6. The most King's Indian move putting pressure on d4 and thereby forcing white to release the tension in the center and grab space with the move d5. And after knight e7 we have one of the most hotly disputed lines, or tabias I think we say nowadays, over the last couple centuries. Many games have been played here and the verdict is still not clear. What is clear is that normally you get a sharp fight out of this position. The structure determines the plans for both sides. White wants to expand on the queen side. He wants to prepare the advanced c5, gain some space here, then try to open up the queen side and exploit the black weaknesses on c7 and a7 while hoping that nothing too bad happens to him on the king side in the meantime. And that's where black's chances lie. Black wants to start a king side attack. He wants to remove this knight, then go for the pawn push f5 and ideally start a pawn roller on the king side, f4, g5, we see that very often, h5, arrange his pieces behind his pawns and try to checkmate the white king. That's what many players, me included, dislike about playing this line with white. If things go badly, you can get checkmated very cruelly and that's not a normal scenario for a solid 1d4 player, so white really has to know what he's doing here. The best move in this position is still not determined. The fashionable move over the last 10-15 years has been the move B4, the bayonet attack, championed by Vladimir Kramnik, who even made Kasparov quit the King's Indian by playing this move. Theoretical debates are still very much ongoing here after B4, Knight H5 or A5. I'm not sure what Nakamura prepared here, but he certainly has experience in this position. Beat Vichy Anand, for example, on the black side of this line. So goes for another line, he goes for the move knight to e1, which might look strange at first sight, but it's fairly typical move in the King's Indian and one of the main lines as well. The knight is regrouped, often it will go to d3 from where it can support the c5 advance, and white is also anticipating the black plan, which is knight d7 followed by f5, and he's preparing to go f3 and keep his pawn chain intact, defend the pawn on e4. So knight d7 is indeed played, so goes for f3 here immediately. Many alternatives recently set up with knight d3, f5 and bishop d2 has been quite fashionable. But there are many different plans to choose for, for white. 
to choose from for white here. F3, F5, so goes for the move bishop e3, one of the most ambitious and principled moves. This bishop chooses a nice diagonal from where it can and will also support the advanced c5. The move does have one drawback and that is it loses time. After f4, which is a move black wants to play anyway to get his kingside attack going, the bishop has to move again. It goes to the f2 square where it's well placed to prepare play on the queen side. It can sometimes be a liability when it comes to defending the king side. We'll see that idea later. Pawn, black pawn marching all the way to g3 could hit the bishop here and it also occupies the f2 square so it can't be occupied by the knight which sometimes is useful here trying to defend his own king and stopping black from going g4. Still this move bishop e3 followed by bishop f2 has been known for a long time. One of the leading forces in his development has been the legend Viktor Korchnoi who considered the king's Indian to be incorrect and this was his weapon of choice to prove it. Not always successfully but he was a firm believer in the white position here. For now we're just getting started. All of this is mainline theory. Nakamura plays g5, part of the plan. When white has a choice the main move as far as I know is the move a4 here which is a move you see very often in these positions trying to either see space with a5 or in some lines also trying to prepare the move knight b5 and if it gets hit after a6 to retreat to a3 which is a bit more convenient if you have a pawn on a4 already than if your pawn was still on a2. So a4 is a move, knight b5 is another move immediately targeting the a7 pawn hoping for a6 knight to a7 when the goal is to exchange this bishop on c8 which is a key player in pretty much every black kingside attack because it has access to the g4 square but as far as I know after knight b5 b6 black is supposed to be fine. There's more lines here and so goes for an alternative which is also well known the move knight to d3 very directly preparing the c5 advance. Knight to g6 this is always part of black setup the knight wasn't really doing anything on e7 so it goes to g6 doesn't stand in the way anymore and is eyeing the important h4 h4 and f4 squares later the white setter will determine how black goes about his business the most typical plan is to play h5 put the knight on f6 then in many lines play rook f7 often play bishop to f8 and then try to make something happen based on the g4 advance c5 was the idea of white's last move so he immediately plays it knight to f6 rook to c1 another logical move anticipating the opening of the c file and preparing c takes d followed by knight to b5 let's say black is just a little careless here goes h5 then c d c d knight b5 it's already quite unpleasant targeting the a7 pawn and preparing knight to c7 which is a great square for the knight from where it can continue his journey to e6 and often it just picks up material by hitting this rook. Therefore Nakamura plays a better move rook to f7 preparing for the cd and knight b5 by covering this c7 square. This position is still mainline theory the main move here is a4 which leads to very sharp play after either h5 or bishop f8 it's a race white quite often plays a5 next typical play would be something like g4 cd6 cd6 knight to b5 when we see one point of the pawn on a5 is that now after a6 bishop b6 is possible once again fighting for the c7 square i'm not a big expert in all these complications i guess black goes g3 here or even h4 and the play becomes incredibly sharp but this is the main idea here to go for a4 and then continue with the queenside build up so plays a different move he plays the move king to h1 which has been played before it's a useful move in many lines in general the king is stepping out of the g file where bad things could potentially happen later should the position open up sometimes the g1 square is also cleared for the bishop let's say black gets in his h5 g4 business and then 
the bishop has a retreat on g1 after g3. This is seldomly a good idea, but it could be a factor as well. Still, I have to say that king h1 does strike me as a little bit slow, and I would believe the critical move in the position is a4 instead. h5 was played, very logical, preparing g4. Now white has to do something, and this is where I believe Wesley so goes astray. He goes for the move c takes d6, which doesn't have to be a mistake in itself, but in combination with the plan he chooses, I think it's not a good idea. Black recaptures, c takes d, and now he goes for knight b5. Standard move, but in this particular situation it just strikes me as not very efficient. Black goes a6, and this knight here yeah, doesn't have anywhere good to go. C7 is covered, knight a7 would just be met by bishop d7, and the knight looks a bit silly on a7, so it has to retreat, go knight to a3, and now black plays b5, shutting the knight out of the c4 square, and making it look a bit sad on a3, frankly. Something has gone very wrong here for white already. He's played his hand on the queen side, but hasn't achieved anything, and he should have done better. There's two possibilities that occur to me. The most obvious improvement, I believe, is to go knight b5 without taking on d6 first. And the difference is that after a6, knight a3, now black does not have the move b5, which we just saw in the game, because now white would take, since the c-pawn is still on the board, go knight c4 and create some targets for his knight. Instead, where black would probably play g4 here or immediately after knight b5, my best guess is immediately after knight b5, which would lead to a very sharp fight. C, D, C, D, knight a7, bishop d7. I haven't analyzed this position much. I'm not an expert here. I still believe that black has good chances and he's only lost one pawn on the queen side, which is not too much compared to some other king's Indian lines where you really lose a house there, but still create counter chances by going for the king's side attack. So I believe this position is playable, but certainly white would have achieved something as well, and it would have been a very messy fight. Another alternative, if you want to play cd6, after cd6, I think so here, should prefer the move queen to c2. Once again, preparing knight b5, followed by knight to c7. When after g4, knight b5, now black really can't go a6 since knight c7 would pretty much win at least material and it does not look good for black instead black would have to slow down a little bit go knight to e8 here and once again we get a typical position after knight a7 bishop d7 where white has won a pawn but black has his attack on the king side and things are very very unclear but either of these lines were to be preferred. The lion so chose just strikes me as bad. I'm not sure what went wrong for him, but after b5 he hasn't achieved much on the queen side and can't really stop the black attack from rolling. He goes rook c6, logical enough, trying to occupy the c-file with the following moves queen c2 and rook to c1. Nakamura continues his attack with the move g4. Nakamura was also unsure what went wrong in the opening for his opponent. He speculated that the computer often gives white a huge plus in all these lines. In the King's Indian it doesn't mean all that much <coughs> if the computer says plus one or even plus two for white because it can't evaluate the long-term consequences of the black king side attack. So he speculated that so just saw the computer gives this as good for white and went for it. But I'm not sure that's the whole explanation because this position the computer even doesn't think is that great for white and it certainly doesn't approve of the c takes d and knight b5 business. We'll probably never find out what went wrong in Wesley Soul's preparation but it was not a successful opening for him. g4 was played hinting at the typical pawn sacrifice g3 but after queen c2, Nakamura does something else, and this is a plan I haven't seen much in these positions, but it does strike me as very logical. He plays the move queen f8. Not the typical square for the queen, normally the bishop goes here, but after queen f8, the idea is to just develop the bishop. He's anticipating white playing rook to c1, and now after rook c1 he can go bishop d7, and since the queen is on f8, 
d6 is covered, which it wouldn't be with a queen on d8, and therefore black is absolutely fine and manages to get his bishop out. I'm not sure bishop takes c6 is a big threat here, but Wesley so decides to save his rook and go rook to c7. However, once again we see he did seize control of the c file, but he really didn't achieve much on the queen side. Apart from that, no material gains, not even a clear target to attack. And that's just too little in the King's Indian. Bishop h6, another very quiet move. I would be thinking about going g3 here already or h4, but Nakamura understood nothing too bad is happening to him on the other side of the board, so he has time to improve his pieces to the max, and the bishop is certainly better placed on h6 than on g7. On this diagonal, things could happen once the position opens up after g3, or even after f3 later on, we'll see this in the game. So the bishop is much better placed there, and also this rook gains some freedom to join the attack from g7 or h7, should it be needed. Nice move, bishop h6. Wesley Sow's next move, bishop to e1, shows that something has gone wrong because he doesn't have a clear way to proceed and therefore sort of has to buy time. Bishop e1 makes sense, g3 no longer comes with tempo and the bishop in some lines can also find useful work from b4 but if you have to play moves like bishop e1 in these positions where black already has a spot on g4 something has gone wrong. Now once again I'm impressed with Nakamura's treatment of the position Standard move to my mind would be the move g3, but g3 does not achieve that much. White could just answer bishop f1, overprotect the weak g2, g2 <laughs> pawn, and in many lines prepare to go h3, closing the king side completely. By the way, if you're wondering why not go h3 immediately and close everything, there's one line here after h3 that shows the dangers of the white position already. Black could sacrifice not one but two pieces by going bishop takes h3, g takes h, h and knight takes e4. Point is after f takes e4, f3 is coming and even though black is two pieces down here, the position is no fun for white at all dealing with these pawns and the open, open king side. Bishop is ready to cash in on c1. So this would be very very dangerous for white. The line is not very relevant but just as a reminder, whenever you go h3 in such positions, you have to be quite sure that bishop h3 doesn't work. Still, g3 was not an immediate knockout, and Nakamura finds a stronger way, a much stronger way to play, which is the move h4, preparing to break up the white pawn chain at the base by going h3. Tends to be the most effective way to attack a pawn chain to hit the base here, which is the pawn on g2. And if black were allowed to go h3 next move, then the white position, the construction on the king side would really crumble. Wesley So is therefore forced to act, and that's what he does. He plays the only move, f takes g4. When black has a choice, the move So might have been hoping for is the most obvious move, the move knight takes e4, which is winning a nice central pawn, but it gives white a bit of a breather and white manages to stabilize here to play bishop f3, knight to g5 and knight to f2, controlling some key squares in the center and also the h3 square. And this position is by no means clear. The knight on g6 is under attack and white would be very much in the game. However, this was not Nakamura's idea. Instead, he came up with a very spectacular combination. Pay attention from now on, pretty much every move Nakamura will sacrifice something. He went for the move f3. White is forced to take, g takes f3, and you might think why well, this is a sacrifice, he's winning material on c1, but he does not want that rook, he doesn't want to give up his bishop. Strong bishop now on h6 for the rook, after queen takes c1, white would be in great shape, he already picked up two pawns, his queen can come out to g5. This is not what black wants at all. Instead, what black wants is attack the white king, and that was the base of Nakamura's last two moves. Now he goes knight takes e4, blowing the position wide open. First point is that f takes e4 does not work. 
f takes e4, rook f1 check is the idea, and if bishop f1, queen f1 is checkmate, so you don't want to do that. You have to go king g2, and here a fantastic quiet move. We're going to see a very similar idea later in the game, so keep this in mind. Move bishop to e3. Threatening rook g1 check with checkmate following soon, and if white goes bishop takes f1, there is h3 check distracting the white king, separating it from his f1 bishop, and mate will follow. King g3, king a3 is even worse because of checkmate in two moves, I believe. Queen f3 check, followed by bishop takes g4 checkmate. Can't do that, and if king g3, just queen takes f1 with too many threats, one of them being bishop f4, knight f4, e f4 checkmate, if white tries to free the f3 square for his king by playing bishop f2, queen g2 check is also mate. So that would not work at all. Therefore you can't take on e4. Instead, the best chance was probably the move rook takes d7. The idea is that if white goes, if black goes rook takes d7 now, which looks natural. Now white can go f e4. There's no longer rook f1. And while this position is not completely clear, it would be very acceptable for white and probably better for white. Instead, and that's what makes Nakamura's last move so impressive, he must have planned a very spectacular move here. The move rook takes f3. He's ignoring the white rook and instead of capturing it, sacrifices his own rook on f3, willing to part with a lot of material, but some analysis shows that this position is once again just winning for black. He does have too many pieces in the attack and white does not have enough defensive resources. One key line is bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. Now if you go king g1, it's a beautiful quiet move, the move h3 with an unstoppable threat of bishop e3 check followed by queen g2 checkmate. Try it out, there's not much you can do about that. So instead, why would I have to try queen to g2? Now black finally does take a piece, goes queen takes d3, and we can already see that the black attack would just keep rolling. However, there's one key tactic which is very pretty, so I'll show it to you. White goes rook to d1, hoping for queen takes d1, when after queen takes e4, he'd be back in business. Attacking the g6 knight, everything is protected for now, position is very unclear. But black doesn't have to take, instead he can continue to sacrifice pieces, and this just wins. Bishop to d2. The point is, after bishop takes d2, black goes knight to f4, activating his Knights to the maximum, there is just no defense. For example, queen to f1, black is not done sacrificing pieces. Knight f2 check, this one has to be taken. Queen f2, queen d5 check, king g1, knight a3 check, king f1, knight takes f2. It's not so much that black won the queen, materially white is still very fine here. Problem is his king is now completely exposed and the last resource, rook f8 check is coming. Checkmate would follow very, very soon. So that was probably the critical line and once again, yeah, massive respect to Nakamura for calculating all of this from afar. As a King's Indian player, he probably felt there had to be something and of course he's a great calculator. So he came up with all this stuff, rook takes d7, rook takes f3 and there seems to be no way out for white. Instead, Wesley so tried to move rook to d1, just removing this rook from the attack of the bishop and hoping for the best. But Nakamura remains relentless and the next move is not gonna be a surprise to you. He goes rook takes f3 once again. And this is very, very strong. It can't be taken this time because of some more Simple reasons, queen g2, black just goes, bishop takes g4 and wins the house. h3 is a threat, queen takes d1 is now a threat with the bishop on g4. There's just absolutely no defense for white and he could resign here. 
So you can't take on f3, therefore you have to try to at least cash in some material. Go rook takes d7 now. This could have transposed to the line we just saw if after rook d7, rook f3, white would play the quiet move rook d1. But it's no surprise that this also does not work. Rook f1 check, the sacrifices aren't over. This is one that can easily be declined because bishop f1, queen f1 is once again checkmate. So the king has to go to g2. And even this position, if you have to calculate it from afar, you are some material down. I haven't even counted, I think, yeah. White is a piece up, black is a piece down. And there's no apparent checkmate, but it turns out there's not one but two very pretty ways here to go after the white king. We'll get to the one plate in the game in a minute. Let's first look at the other option that, according to the merciless computers, was more direct and it's extremely pretty. It's the move a3 check, king takes a3, only move. And now an incredible move, the move rook to f2. Threatening all kinds of things, mainly knight to f4 or knight to g5. With this rook on f2, checkmate would be near. But the question is, what happens if white just takes it? Bishop takes f2. And the answer is an amazing queen sacrifice. Queen takes f2. Once again, threatening knight g5, checkmate. And if this queen is captured, knight takes f2, knight f4 check, king h4, bishop g5 leads to a very picturesque, is that a word? Very picturesque chess checkmate for the white king. So that would have worked a3 check, spectacular, but Nakamura's move is no less spectacular. And it's arguably even prettier because it's so quiet and he insists on having all his pieces, his rook on f1 hanging, sacrificing something, every move goes bishop to e3, introducing the big, big threat of rook g1 check, amongst other things, into the position. a3 also still looming. If white does nothing, he just gets checkmated with rook g1 and knight g5. Therefore, white has to accept this very Greek gift, go bishop takes f1, a3 check. Oh no, I'm sorry. If he were to accept it, he didn't actually do it. If bishop f1, a3 check does conclude the game. King h3, queen f3 check, bishop g3, and knight g5 with yet another pretty checkmate. That's the problem with these king's Indians. There's just too many checkmates out there once the black attack gets rolling and it's so hard to defend over the board. In this game, I think there was no defense even objectively, but even if there is to navigate all these lines, and if you make the slightest mistake, it's checkmate, it's no fun. So since bishop takes f1 was not an option, so played bishop to g3 instead, trying to at least defend against the immediate threats. Now h3 no longer leads to checkmate because of king takes h3 and all of a sudden, Things would not be that easy for black, but bishop g3, of course, creates new problems in that this bishop is on priest. Nakamura does not forgive here. He just takes it, which brings new ideas into the position like knight to h4 check. Even this pawn could become quite a factor in its own right. Rook takes f1. What else? If bishop takes f1, knight h4 check, king h3, and queen to h6 decides the game, threatening a lethal discovered check with his knight that cannot be stopped. Rook takes f1 was played, knight h4 check, same idea, king h3, queen to h6. Once again, it's not pretty if white does nothing, let's say b4 once again, he is checkmated immediately, knight f5 check. King g2, queen h2 check, king f3, and the concluding move we've seen in a bunch of lines now, knight g5 checkmate. Therefore, something has to be tried. Wesley So goes g5, trying to create an escape route for his king, clearing the g4 square. 
But if, yeah, that's your hope that you can bring your king out to g4 into the great wide open where all the black pieces are, something has gone wrong. And of course, so must have been well aware of that by now and was just fighting to avoid immediate checkmates. g5, knight takes g5 check, king to g4. Nakamura remains extremely precise, was probably enjoying himself here. Goes knight hf3. This time the threat is queen a3 checkmate. That's the reason you can't really capture this knight. Instead, so desperately tried to defend, went knight to f2, covering the h3 square. g takes f2 was winning and quite possible, but Nakamura spotted a different way, which leads to checkmate by giving only checks that tends to be easier to calculate. Therefore, no reason not to go for it. And he went queen h4 check, king f5, rook f8 check, king to g6. And the king has almost concluded his journey, made it to g6, but it's not gonna last very long there. Many ways lead to Rome here, but Nakamura sticks to the one with checks and finds a direct mate. I believe we have video of that. Let me bring it up. It's gonna take a minute. Here we are. Here we see Nakamura playing the move. Rook f6 check. King takes f6 is forced. King gets just a little bit just to make sure it's on f6 and not on f7. And knight e4 double check continuing the public shaming of the white king which really would prefer to sit on h1 and not be bothered but instead he has to continue walking around behind enemy lines and there is the end king g6 queen g5 checkmate let's briefly put this on the board so in the position after king g6 rook f6 check a very nice concluding rook sacrifice to force the king into this double check king f6 knight e4 and no matter where the king goes, the end is near. King e6 would be met with knight d4 checkmate. King f5 would at least delay checkmate for a move. Knight d4, king g6, queen h6 is one way to do it. Wesley so instead on move 39, didn't quite make the time control, went king to g6 and that was met with queen to g5 checkmate. Not a good day at the office for Wesley So, just as the last two days weren't very good, he once again is at the receiving end of a masterpiece. And what a game by Hikaru Nakamura. If we go back a little bit to the position after 25h4, every move he's sacrificing something. f4, f3, gf, knight takes e4. Rook d1, rook takes f3, rook d7, rook f1, king g2, bishop e3, leaving this rook hanging. Bishop g3, okay, here he has to take a piece, but he's still <laughs> leaving his rook on priest, hg, rook f1, knight h4, king h3, queen h6, and this king will meet his maker very, very soon. Very good game by Nakamura. Of course, this was made possible by the sort of mysterious opening treatment from Wesley. So, first of all, yeah, I'm not sure why he went for this line if he didn't have anything special in mind. And then the combination of c takes d6 and knight b5 just strikes me as wrong. After a6, knight a3, b5, it's already an uphill battle against the coming black attack as we've seen in the game. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about the King's Indian and start winning games like that, I don't want to do it. I'm too scared of this space disadvantage, but that's my problem and not a problem of the King's Indian necessarily. But I can recommend the series on chess24.com by Grandmaster Robin Van Kampen, who covered this line and all the other main lines of the King's Indian, giving you a black repertoire. It's a series I learned a lot from, so become a premium member on Chess24 for whatever it is, 10 euros a month. You get access to that one and many more series. It is worth it and Robin did a great job on the King's Indian. 
Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.